Hey friends, Veda Dave here to share a little bit about the upcoming eclipse season, which starts now, really. We've got this full moon coming up Sunday night, early Monday morning, which is a lunar eclipse. And that really kicks off this eclipse season. There's been a lot of talk about the total solar eclipse that happens two weeks from now on uh, Monday, April 8th. But really for the past 10, 12 days or so since the last new moon leading up to the full moon in two days, perhaps you felt this intensity building like a balloon filling with air and this lunar eclipse pops it and starts this two week period where we're in the in the shadow of these eclipses. So a few thoughts just to uh, give you some perspective and, and help you navigate this uh, tumultuous season smoothly. And so just a few notes about eclipses in general. Eclipses are kind of like the on-off switch where, you know, when you reset the Wi-Fi router, the signal goes out and then it comes back on. Hopefully it works a little bit better. Or, uh, you know, when you need a software update on your phone or computer, you download the software and then you have to shut the whole thing down and you open it back up and there's some new features and a new operating system and it takes some getting used to. It's familiar, but also different. And, and so that's kind of what an eclipse does when the the luminaries, the sun and the moon, these bright sources of all light and life in the sky get blocked out by the shadow. It's sort of like the power light going, you know, it's on and then it goes off and then it, it blinks back on again. So that's generally the, the energy of what's happening in an eclipse. And so for the past two weeks or so, as we're building up towards this lunar eclipse, Perhaps you've you've felt some of the signal getting scrambled and you can see, oh, like the Wi-Fi is not quite working right. Time to time to shut off the router, turn it back on again. And so um, this lunar eclipse again happens late Sunday night. Uh, the eclipse portal opens right around 11 p.m. Mountain time. The exact eclipse happens at about 1 a.m. and the portal sort of closes at 3.30 in the morning. And this will be visible over uh, all of the United States. Uh, the classic Vedic recommendation is not to look at the eclipse directly, but instead to be in ceremony, in prayer, doing your practices. Uh, so just be aware that whatever your mind and body are doing during an eclipse has a expanded impact. The reverberations of your thoughts and actions during that portal, that, that specific time of the eclipse, has more far-reaching consequences than at a normal time. So um, this eclipse, this lunar eclipse is happening with the moon in the nakshatra of Hasta, which is in the sidereal sign of Virgo. And that word Hasta specifically translates to the word hand. And it's, it's all about taking things into your own hands. And you're not waiting on fate. You're not waiting on someone else to do it for you. You're not really like praying for some magical outcome. You're doing what is yours to do. What can you actually create and make happen with your own two hands? And so this eclipse is specifically about manifesting your spiritual goals in the world. And so in what ways are you living your spiritual ideals, your, your highest principles and beliefs, and actually using your hands, your body to manifest those principles into the world. So this is a great time to be doing acts of service. Uh, if you volunteer, if you can be helpful, uh, if you can help a friend move, these are the sorts of things that um, you know, we all have these internal beliefs about the kind of person we are and want to be and what are the sort of highest truths that should be the way the world works. And so this eclipse is a really potent time to take those ideals and put them into concrete action. And, and so at the moment of this eclipse, uh, Mercury is joined the sun and is debilitated in the sign of Pisces and right in a Gandanta point. So Mercury is in a really complex position, not, not very strong. And so uh, 
the invitation is not to try to make sense of it. Don't don't try to be rational about the process. Uh, collecting data is not going to be a successful endeavor at this time. It's really like uh, embodied. Just do what your body wants to do. Uh, don't get into any complex tasks or you know figuring stuff out or doing analysis of any kind. Just notice what invitations are there for for embodied action and follow that without asking too many questions without trying to make sense of it because the meaning making function the the sort of intellectual capacity is is going to be a bit distorted so uh just be aware of that again sunday night into monday but really like starting now right and then and then we have this two week period between this coming uh, Sunday, March 24th, until Monday, April 8th, when there is the solar eclipse, where we're in this, uh, yeah, the shadow eclipse, in between the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. Again, the main thing in this time is no major decisions. The, again, this is the time to be getting the downloads. You're downloading the new operating software. It's not time to do anything with it yet. And, and so... If you think about quitting your job or ending a relationship or making some major move, yeah, get the downloads, feel it, uh, do a lot of journaling, uh, collect all the information, feel the feelings, but don't make any major final decisions until after April 8th uh, when you've got the new software downloaded, you reboot the system, and, and come mid-April, it'll be better time to uh, actually take some action based on the information that you've gathered and, and collected. So uh, looking forward to this total solar eclipse on April 8th. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to it and are going to travel to see it. Again, the traditional Vedic wisdom, uh, an eclipse is generally not understood to be a, a positive omen. Again, when the source of all light and light, life and warmth gets blocked out in the middle of the day and the temperature drops about 15 degrees and all the birds go silent and the animals are shell, like this is not generally understood to be a real like happy thing. And so traditionally, um, it's not something that we want to go out and look at, although you know there are lots of different practices, it's a powerful opportunity for manifestation. You know, our, our minds, the, the quality of our thoughts reverberate much, much further. Again, it's sort of a portal. There's this cosmic alignment. And so the question is, what are you sending out through the portal? What are you inviting in through that portal in the sky? So um, this solar eclipse is about the inner work that you need to do in order to make the external world a better place. In order to show up and be the person that you are in the world, there's a lot of internal wrangling and cle clearing that, that needs to happen. And so what are the inner practices? What's your inner dialogue like? Uh, what, what are those um, what's your self, the quality of your self-talk? And, and so these, these internal practices, the internal work, the grappling with your own soul, your own mind, that is going to allow you to show up in the world and, and help to contribute to humanity at this vital time in, in uh, the history of our species. So that's what this solar eclipse is about. And the solar eclipse is happening in the sidereal sign of Pisces in Revati nakshatra. And this is the final nakshatra in the whole zodiac. Pisces is the, the 12th sign right before starting over at Aries. And Revati is the final 13 degrees and 20 minutes of the zodiac. And Revati is, is all about this sort of surrendered, transcendent state. It's the after death state where everything sort of comes together and makes sense and coheres, but it's this very like spiritually uh, clear place of total surrender, total release. And, and so the, there's the opportunity for this to be an intensely spiritual experience. And Venus will be right there. Venus is exalted in Pisces and is caught up in this eclipse. And, and Venus is exalted in Pisces 
because Venus is all about pleasure and beauty and, and sensory enjoyment. And Pisces takes that to a spiritual level. And, and so there's this opportunity for it to be this blissful, beautiful, a very like psychedelic type state. But with Rahu there, it could also be indulgence in narcotic type substances and uh, too much drinking or partying or, or the sort of dulling of the mind and uh, indulgence in the more base desires. So, you know, sex, drugs, this, this sort of thing, which, um, it, and, and again, it's up to you which end of the spectrum you're on. Again, you're going to take it to this profound spiritual level and, and have beautiful realizations of the unity of all existence and fully surrender your egoic identity to unify with all that is? Or are you going to uh, indulge in the body and your obsessions and, and addictions and, and let the stress, the intensity of the eclipse portal uh, sort of shut you down and, and go to what brings comfort, what, what you know, dulls the senses in order to uh, not have to experience the full intensity of of this creative experience. So, um, yeah, yeah, this inner work to make the outer world a better place is is the major theme of of the solar eclipse. And and I just want to share an image real quick so we can link this um, this solar eclipse with the previous great american eclipse in 2017 so you see the the 2017 eclipse entered in oregon and exited in uh south carolina and so it sort of cut the united states in half splitting us north south kind of like the mason dixon line and and what was happening in august of 2017 well it was the first year of trump's term as president and you know the country it was a very divisive time and the the divisions were getting deeper weren't they and so yeah sure enough this eclipse sliced the country into and now coming up in april we have this eclipse it comes in through texas and exits out through maine and and sort of slices the country in an east-west direction and so it creates this big x across the United States. And, and if you want to look at it a certain way, uh, one of my teachers mentioned that looks kind of like the Confederate flag in a way, doesn't it? It's kind of the way that it is shaped and organized. And so generally speaking, again, this doesn't look like a very happy omen, uh, a big eclipse X across the United States is um, not the most exciting thing, but also like, look at what's happening around. It's not all that surprising, is it? The, this is just what's happening. And, and I find some uh, consolation in the fact that if you were a skilled astronomer thousands of years ago, you could have seen this coming and mapped this path. And this is just the natural flow of history in the cosmos at this time on planet Earth. So everything is in order. Uh, we evolve through alternating bouts of chaos and order. And so you notice there, it's, it's a little bit chaotic out there right now and trust that this is part of the ev evolution into a higher state of order. And, and so we see the ways in which the country is split and divided and, and all these things. And again, I take solace in the understanding that 80, 90% of people agree that the basic things that humans need, you know, food, shelter, safety, family, education, and some art and music and some freedom to express ourselves. Everybody agrees on those basic principles and, and how we go about them, what that looks like for each individual can vary. Uh, and, and so uh, I am really doing my best to focus on what brings us all together. And, and what we all have in common, because again, e with the apparent divisions that separate us and the different ideas of what is right and wrong, uh, most of us still can agree on some really basic principles. And, and so again, this weekend and for the next two weeks, really focus on what can, what, what is yours to do? What is 
your it, within your sphere of influence? What can you use your body, your two hands to influence in in order to enact your spiritual ideals into the world? And then come the solar eclipse in April, it's really diving into that inner work. What is your subtle psycho-emotional, psycho-spiritual process at this moment in order to be able to contribute to the evolution happening on the planet right now? And so uh, with that, uh, wish you the best of luck. If you're interested in learning more about how this eclipse is likely to impact you specifically based on your birth chart, let me know. We can have a look and um, I'll look forward to seeing you out there. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and uh, I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay, bye.